Hello and uh, welcome to Blackness Rides. On this edition we are going to be doing a review. It's the first product review I think I've done. I've got loads in the, in the files ready to be done but I just haven't got around to any. But uh, I seem to be getting quite a bit of interest in this uh, crash helmet you see before you since um, I've put out a bit on social media with it. Everyone want to know what it is and everything. So uh, I thought I'd do a little uh, rundown on the specs and uh, performance of the next XD1. Right, and here it is, the latest dual sport edition from Nex, the XD1. Uh, it's a fiberglass construction, it's a kilo and a half, it's uh, quite weighty but I'm used to carbon fiber ones apart from the uh, Tour X4 Arrow there, it's just, the yeah, Arrow is just slightly lighter, but um, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's cool, it's a good solid thing. Um, it comes in three guises, you've got this, the dual sport, or you can remove the uh, visor and have like more motocrossy sort of style or you can take all this off all together um, and have it as a street style um, it's got a lot of functions going on I basically I, I got this because well, as you see I've got a bit of a helmet thing like a woman has with shoes but um, I bought the uh, Arai Tour X4 and uh, I just didn't really greatly get on you know it's a nice helmet don't get me wrong beautifully made all the business but uh, it was damn noisy um, and just little things like you can't see this now because I've gone over with a sharpie but that chafed through where it kind of flaps around a bit in the wind if you're getting sort of like doing cruising speeds on the motorway and uh, yeah it sort of just, just wore through and plus it's a right bitch to uh, change the visors over if you get caught out at night you want to put your clear one on or whatever you've got to undo these take you know, both sides take the peak off and click it all put it back on it don't sound like a big deal but uh, few times I've lost these little bolts on the floor and it's just been uh, not like usual arrow thing where they just pop them out but um, that's just just minor gripe of mine you know generally really nice helmet but was loud what I have come to realize now after buying the next you are going to get noise with any adventure helmet um, mainly to do with all the furniture and shenanigans the peak uh, with this one it, it sounds really noisy you tilt your head down a little bit quietens right up but it's just purely you know you're going to get that with all this kind of furniture whatever you want to call it all over the crash helmet um, but yeah, basically functions. Um, this has got one of them dual tint visor systems that just drops down at the pull of a button. The thing is, this 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 crash helmet, you know, it looks badass. Don't get me wrong. The reason I bought it, I saw one on the uh, on a magazine and thought that looks badass. I got to have one. So that's how comes I've got it now. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's relatively cheap compared to a lot of things I've got and a lot that's on the market. I think I paid two hundred and sixty something pound for this. And uh, it's worth bearing in mind that Touratech um, have obviously commissioned Next to uh, make their Touratech Adventuro, or whatever it's called, because that's basically the same helmet in carbon fibre and uh, a couple of hundred quid more. Um, but anyway, I did one of the first tractor wheels, the carbon fibre one, and realised Next don't actually do a carbon fibre one. They've obviously reserved that for uh, the rights of Touratech. They must have paid them great sums. Um, so yeah, what have you got? Vents, you can open it medium or wide. Open up the bottom of the chin. It's got some exhausts going on. All pretty standard stuff. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's not quiet. If you want a quiet helmet, you're gonna need earplugs with this. Um, it comes right, what you've got in a bag. Nice helmet bag as always. A visor bag. loads of stuff. Right, these little uh, bolts will come in a plug layer. A GoPro mount. As an action helmet they've marketed this quite well with uh, their accessorising and uh, we'll uh, tell you what that, that, that does in a bit. It's uh, quite obvious by the title. These little side brakes. Extra uh, ventilation in the front if you want to click that in. These are the side pods if you're just going to run it straight as a visor. That's like street style. And uh, these pads, which I'll show what they're about in a minute. Also, when you're going full on adventure, comes with a nice little peak extension, which I'll demonstrate. And uh, extra cheek pads. Now, 
or I will point out with sizes with every crash helmet I've had over the last god knows how many years I've always been a medium now the arrows are all medium the bells are all medium everything I put a medium on spot on all the time I put on a medium of this and and it was like shoehorn that on it was so tight um, my friend Sergeant Fingers who you see about he also bought one and he was a medium with the arrows he bought the medium um, and he's probably regretting it now because his eyes are bulging out and he pulls his visor up he looks like he's been baking bread in there or something but uh, this so I went for a large and to be honest it's probably on the slightly looser side but I can theoretically pump it out a little bit with, uh, with the pads but it's alright it's comfortable it's nice you know it's just where I want to crash it on it as long as it doesn't sort of like get any baggy up it's, it's fine um, but yeah bear that in mind if, if you're going to mail order it um, because uh, the medium is really tight uh, other little things that was a bit of a pain I run the centre now these have got uh, a space for their XCOM or whatever it's called system um, and also other generic sort of uh, Bluetooth sets comes with this which supposedly you'd fit in there and you can you know put whatever that sort of however that fits the centre didn't and it was a bit tricky, I had to do a bit of modification to get the centre fit if you're running the centre because you'd think ideally you'd probably come off here nice pads, sit that on, it's clear up there, that, that slot straight up the only trouble then, when you've got all these contouring going on um, the centre actually sat in there and you couldn't take it off or get the area up and so what I had to do was I had to take this off um, and you'll see there's just like a, like a plastic bit that goes across I just had to dremel that out and also just up inside there there's a little lip which is the inside of this just don't dremel that off fits up there lovely fully functions now comes on and off does everything you want it to do so just be idea that'd be the pad for uh, the you know, system they run um, you'll also notice on the side these pods these are what originally come with it I've put a quick uh, strap on there for which uh, will become apparent a little bit later um, but they do actually supposedly come with quick strap pot ready pods uh, but I didn't actually get any in my pack so uh, we'll be getting on to uh, shop where I got it from and see if there has been some mistake one thing with this helmet it is you know it's a beautiful badass looking thing but it does come across if you compare it to like the Arai it's, it's, it's obviously a lot cheaper than the Arai by about 300 quid or so um, and uh, you know you can tell that just the finish quality on it you know it looks nice and all that but you know it's, it, it's little bits of it just a little bit cheap but um, but then narrow eyes you know handmade you know etc blah 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 uh, the ventilation works on it well we've fully tested all of that out we, we, we have road tested this we uh, first weekend of bought it done a little mission through um, Peak District and uh, you know that was nice I had that on for a good sort of 300 odd miles that day and uh, yeah it was just lovely did everything um, compared to right noise wise compared to the Arai it, it, it's probably a little bit louder than the Arai but um, you know that kind of defeated that object but well you know never mind just got to get on with it anyway. I can still hear uh, when I've got my send on when I've got my Bluetooth music playing in I can still hear that going up the motorway at you know whatever amount of speed and uh, yeah it's fine and still use my comms to talk to people so uh, you know it does that bit yeah, as for sort of functionality of everything, uh, really good. Um, compared, to just if you're going to change the visor on this, this is another little thing. Is this little screw? Obviously, compared to the Arrow, that didn't have that. But, uh, you've got a lot of flapping around on the visor. You know, cruise up the motorway and all that. This is much more rigid because it's uh, secured back here as well. But yeah, just to change the visor, or whatever, really quick. You just got these. Twist them up. A little bit fiddling, Go wiggle this out like so. Wiggle, wiggle, comes off. Lift that up. Just give us a little pull. And there it is. You kind of get an idea of the street style look. I am. Um, bought the obligatory uh, black visor this is the dark smoke 80% up and all we do again line that up give it a pop like that. you've got a little sort of divot in here that just slots in that there a bit a little bit 
gentle with it. There you go, pop. That's that working. So like I said, you have these which you can just slot in. Is that, is that the right one? Like so. Put your clip in. There you go. Well, click it down, make sure that clicks down. That is it, that's the street style. As you see, it looks badass. It's got that kind of uh, futuristic fighter pilot thing going on. It looks very raw. Pops out, wiggle wiggle. And while I have got this at this stage, I'll just show you other little safety features that have gone. They've done these reflective strips just in here all this ribbon down the bottom here and that lex in the back there and uh, it does glow up at night if uh, get a bit of light in it put this back on just click this in so this little thing it's a bit plasticky don't know how long that's going to last it would have been nice if I uh, put that one in a bit better quality Clicks down like that. These on. That position. Voila. You might not think that you'd require a black visor when you've got the internal tinted one, but the other day I was uh, riding over on the black visor on and the uh, sun was really low and uh, black visors just weren't doing it. Drop the second one down, absolutely perfect. So, uh, you know, you your black visors, didn't you? Inside, all the lining is totally removable. This has got that emergency uh, lining, so you just pull on these, this little click out both sides. If you're in an unfortunate situation where uh, you end up there to get the helmet off of you, and uh, so that's a little quick release system they've got on that, which is great. Inside, for the communication, um, fitting it, it was basically simple, you, you obviously fitted one before, um, so you just need to run the speakers, take the lining out, run the speakers around. They've actually put inside there, I'll take this right out, I don't know if you can see, but in there there's uh, like a, a recess ready to run the microphones, uh, sorry, the speakers into, so they go in the back there. Um, then everything clicks in, covers over it, you wouldn't even know they're there. Uh, comes with this chin piece, that just clicks up in there. Be careful um, when you're taking it on and off because a few times, you know, obviously where you naturally grab the crash helmet, this has popped off a few times. I nearly lost it, so that's worth uh, just bearing in mind. And uh, make sure this is clicked in because you're just carrying it around. I do find the inside uh, does seem to come out quite easy. Um, like I said, this has been proper, fully tested. Um, we went done some off roading the other day, and. Uh, yeah, I can understand why they also give the option of doing the sort of like the motocrossy sort of rally kind of conversion with uh, putting some goggles in because everything that you know I was in some uh, some paddles and uh, yeah, got all splattered up inside the inside, the visor all got covered. So that's the idea of wearing goggles um, when you're off in the trails or whatever you're doing, is uh, will give you a lot better protection because I just had dust on the dust inside my eyes and in my mouth and it was just yeah. So yeah, goggles are definitely the way forward. Um, so what I'll do now, I'll just change it into its uh, full-on off-road Avid guys uh, with the goggles and uh, give you a little look-see. And here it is, in its full glory of off-road, let's go and get dirty, have some mode. Uh, we've got the extended peak, stop any sort of shrapnel bashing down, the light glaring in as best as possible. Um, maybe even draft down a little bit more air, I don't know. Fitted in the mouthpiece, so uh, air just gets blasted directly in and around the helmet, that's good. Uh, and uh, more ventilation, which is uh, always handy when you're blowing out your ass. I'm using these quick straps, like I said before, but it says in the book, um, that they do these quick strap ready 
kind of inserts, which are basically the same as these, but they've got a little divot in there that they sit. Um, but this doesn't come with them. So what I've done, these ones that I've got on are actually what are intended for a GoPro or an action cam to mount on. Um, now, here's not my views on the action cam. Let's talk about that. Where is it? Where's it gone? Right. Now, they give you this option of one of these. A little bit feeling thing with that, just basically slots in there. Then you clamp down. There it is. Alright, there we go. Alright, so that just clamps down tight and kind of squishes it in. If you're fiddling around with it, it does go uh, fairly solid. Um, and the other options, I haven't actually got that straight at all, are to mount them on these uh, panels inserts that they put on here. Now, the trouble with that, and uh, it, it probably worked great with uh, some cams, but I like to run really well, quite wide vision, uh, quite wide angle lens. And um, and back here, I found if I mounted on here, I'd get a lot of helmet in the, in the, in the picture, where like with most of my filming, I personally like to mount it down in this kind of region. Only problem this uh, brings, and I, I have actually recorded uh, with it in that position, but this where it isn't a great flat area because of where all the contours are, and then this, it was uh, a little bit tricky to get a pad to stick on there properly, and uh, I wouldn't, you know, compared to a normal sort of like flat helmet, you know, I wouldn't trust it as much. But yeah, you can see it's, you know, it's going to pick up more noise now, obviously, it's got more areas for the wind to blat off of. And then it's just like areas like this, you know, the wind's going to catch in there, it's going to whistle around. Uh, noise, noise, that's its only downfall. But like I said, all the venture helmets with all of this is going to be noisy. Uh, and, uh, but you know, we don't do this sort of stuff for a quiet life anyway. But yeah, all in all, what I'd say, for the money, the build quality is not amazing compared to a lot of the, you know, the top manufacturers. This hasn't actually got, I noticed, um, <laughs> We have the British Motorcycle Sport, the uh, ACU uh, goals on all my other helmets. This one doesn't come with that. Um, but yeah, obviously it's Chanel tested British standard, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, I tested it as uh, I nutted the floor. So, summary, what we got? Looks 10. It's, you know, it's badass. There's no getting away from that. It's a 10 in the looks department. Uh, comfort, comfort. I'm gonna go. Oh, let's say a seven. Let's see. You know, it's all right. It's seven. I, I'm happy. I've been in it all day. I've been trombling through the woods and fields and everything like that. Yep. I didn't put it off. Didn't get too sweaty. If I did, it all pulls out. All washes up. It's all fine. The interior very practical with its little pockets for the you know earpieces and all that. So yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll give that a seven. Seven plus. Uh, like I said, just uh, keep a check on what size you go for. And uh, you know, preferably try before you buy because you can't generally return these things as well. But um, yeah, I hope this has been of some benefit to you. Um, the only hard thing that I had while I was in the shop, because I already had my heart set on one before I actually saw it in the flesh, was uh, what choice of colour to go for. Because there are just, there's like 20 plus different colour schemes you can have. And uh, they all look really nice in their own right. I ended up going for this one because it was uh, one of the last ones in the shop that actually fit me and two because it uh, matches him well with a bike and I just well really as much as it pained me at the stay away from something black for once uh, but uh, yeah so but all in all absolutely top marks helmet uh, you could do far worse and uh, for the money you know I think they just about cracked it so um, you know I hope this review has been of good to any of you um, if there's anything you need to know, anything you know, anything you else want me to do me reviews on, um, you know, just be good to hear from you. Drop us a comment, hit the like button if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Uh, thank you very much, catch you soon. <laughs>